Maybe you want a pair of noise cancelling headphones, but you don't need the best ANC performance out there. And you probably don't want to drop 500 bucks on a pair of headphones either. Well, that's where these headphones come in. Hey guys, we have the Creative Zen Hybrid headphones with us today and they're definitely very decent, as you would expect from Creative. Before we get into the review, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. So let's talk design first. These come in two colours, black and white, and both actually look quite decent. We have the white one with us here, although I do feel that the bronze-ish words on the ear cup actually look nicer on the black version. But if you're after a more subtle, you know, sort of look, then the words definitely don't stand out as much on the white. So yeah. I'm actually not a big fan of putting the brand name and technologies on the ear cups. It makes it look a bit too much to me. But if you're looking at it from afar, it kind of just looks like a ring around the ear cup. So that's not too bad. The entire headphone is pretty much made with plastic, although you will notice a steel band that shows up when you're adjusting the headband. It's a notched adjustment, which is nice and allows for pretty precise adjusting. Despite the use of plastic, it does feel relatively solid. Although I did hear some plastic creaking noises when I was twisting the headband. Put simply, the headphones should hold up to regular use, but you know, just take care not to put them through the ringer. There's some padding on the headband, but the padding on the ear cups is pretty odd in terms of hand feel. It's kind of like a pebble textured leather that you don't really see very often with ear pads. These are over ear headphones, but the ear cups aren't really all that big nor that deep. My ears actually touch uh, the inner mesh cover that goes over the drivers, and the back of my ears actually start to brush against um, the ear pads. People with larger ears will most likely have an issue here. Here's a comparison against the ear pads of the Apple AirPods Max. You'll notice the difference immediately. If your ears aren't on the larger side though, these will probably be okay. I did wear them for a couple of hours and you know, it was relatively comfortable in terms that the clamping force was just right. Uh, there was no pinching at the crown of my head and you know, even with spectacles, it wasn't really pressing um, the, the arms of my spectacles into my head. So yeah. The headphones fold up very compactly, which I love. Most headphones nowadays are turning to just swiveling the ear cups and calling it a day. This results in bigger case footprints, which aren't the best for when you want to travel light. On the left ear cup, you get a single USB-C port for charging, while on the right, you get volume buttons, the power on button, a 3.5mm port for wired use, and a button to toggle ANC and ambient sound. The power button also doubles as a play pause button when pressed once, and it turns the headphones on or off when held down. For ambient sound, you have to double press the ANC button. The volume buttons also double up for track skipping. Long press on the volume up button to skip to the next track, and long press on the volume down button to skip tracks backwards. Something that I'm actually not very fond of is that whenever you press a button on these, you actually do hear a plastic ping that resonates through the headphones, which isn't very pleasant. There are two 40mm neodymium drivers inside, and these actually come with Creative's Super X5 technology, although it's only Super X5 ready, which means that the Super X5 effect uh, only works with local tracks and files that you have downloaded uh, into your phone or your, whatever device that you're using the headphones with, and not with tracks that you're listening to from services like Spotify, Tidal, and Apple Music. This is actually a major downside because most people nowadays are actually using streaming services. And you know, if most consumers can't get that technology or that effect on what they're listening to, then there isn't really much of, you know, a point to the headphones. You'll have to use the Super X5 app to achieve the effect. And as usual, you get that soundstage widening effect that makes it feel as if you're listening to music in a concert hall. If you haven't done your ear scan, that's where you get it done as well. Oddly enough, the Creative app doesn't support these headphones for whatever reason, which means you can't really adjust many settings or change the EQ. There's no wear detection either, so if you don't want your headphones to run out of battery too quickly, you'll have to pay attention and remember to pause your music whenever you take the headphones off. These run on Bluetooth 5.0 and support SBC and AAC. 
At this price point, it's almost impossible for me to want Bluetooth 5.2 and aptX support, so I will cut Creative some slack here. Battery life is pretty good though, at 37 hours with ANC off and 27 hours with ANC on. I'll take Creative's word for it here, but I did manage to go over a full week without having to charge the headphones, so that's good. ANC is actually surprisingly decent. I wasn't expecting much out of these headphones, uh, seeing that they are so affordable, but the whir of a fan or lower pitch rumbles are actually removed uh, pretty nicely. Although, if you are standing you know, or walking along a busy road, you will still hear the cars going by. Ambient sound is okay as well, but it does sound overly processed. If you just need to have a quick convo with it on though, it's perfectly fine. Microphone quality isn't the best. I mean, if you're just using it for short calls, then it should be fine, but your, my voice at least didn't come across all that clearly. Sound quality isn't too bad either. It's generally well balanced and clean. The bass does feel a bit subdued though, and you won't get that thumpy, rumbly bass, which does affect immersion a little. Mids are detailed and nicely separated with plenty of layering for instruments. Vocals get their chance to shine as well, with a pleasant warmth and a good amount of emotion. Listening to Brendan Urie and his falsetto was a very pleasant experience, and there wasn't any sibilance or harshness in the upper registers. The sound stage is also decently wide, and you do get accurate imaging, which is great. 149 Singapore dollars isn't expensive at all, especially for headphones of this caliber. And you know, there are always sales, and right now there's actually a sale going on which drops these down to 99 Singapore dollars, I believe, which is crazy good value. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Creative Zen Hybrid headphones. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to subscribe to us and like this video. Till the next one, see you guys!